Oil pastels can be messy, but they are so much fun. Let's get started. Our brand is Cray Pa. This line is Junior Artist. It's a great student quality oil pastel and affordable too. Another Cray Pa line is the Expressionist. The Expressionist line is just a little bit higher in quality and a little bit higher in price. If you decide to invest in a personal set of high quality oil pastels, consider the brand Senelier. Plan to spend some money. Sizes of kits will vary. At minimum, you need one that includes black, white, brown, red, yellow, and blue. A second blue is, in, is my personal preference because this lighter cerulean blue is helpful for doing skies and water. The ultramarine blue is the blue you must use when making secondary colors. This paper has tooth. Textured paper helps to grab the media you're using, in this case oil pastel, whereas smooth paper is going to allow the medium to move all over the place and not really stay put. Before we begin, grab an extra scrap of paper that you can use as a guard paper, any paper will do, and a piece of printer paper or other unvaluable paper that you can clean your oil pastel tips off on and potentially sharpen to make corners. The unbent paper clip that you see will be useful later. Let's get started. Rough out four different three-dimensional forms. You don't need a template for this. Just rough it out with your best effort. Notice there is a cast shadow indicated for each form. We'll be demonstrating scumbling as a technique, hatching and cross-hatching, stippling and blending. At the end, I'll show you some tips and one final technique that's used less frequently. A thin layer is applied and then alternate layers of the colors are repeated with thinner applications. This is hatching. On my larger side, I'm gonna use cross hatching with the same thin layering process. You notice I use guard paper here to create sharper edges. Rotate the paper to avoid dragging your hand through the oil pastel. It's pretty easy to track it. This time we'll clean off the pastel first and we're using stippling. You have your base layer that's thin I'm adding some yellow little dots to brighten things up, guard paper, and a final little layer involving some white to indicate this is a side from the light source. On my scumbling cube, I have some areas that are started so I can show you some modifications as I go. Scumbling, of course, is scribbling. You do your thin layers, alternating colors, and then you may need to go back and adjust the contrast of some of the other sides in order to create more defined edges. I incorporate some black, some brown, and some white to push the contrast. Once you've applied your cast shadows, incorporating some black with your origin of color, you're going to end up with something like this. Scraffito is a removal of oil pastel using a sharp tool. One final tip, mistakes happen, right? So there was a little tiny bit of red on the edge of my pastel that I missed, I'm using a very fancy tool known as an unbent paper clip, and I'm using it to scrape off that little red stroke. Now, once I've done that, it maybe not isn't gonna go completely away, but it's gonna become a lot less dominant. So again, there's my unbent paper clip, and it'll allow me to kind of disguise that that was there by going back over it with the blue again. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of roughing up the surface and making it possible for something else to attach to that area because it was so smooth and slick before. So now I'll go back and I'll um, cover this area again. There's my little red devil that got me. I wanna make sure I clean that off first and I'll disguise that. And then I'll show you the final result in the next frame. That's all folks. Sketch your four forms. Incorporate a light source and cast shadows and explore the following techniques, blending, hatching, cross hatching, stippling, and scumbling. You're welcome to try Scraffito for fun. Enjoy.